Hey Explorers, Mark here and welcome to my Outpost Beginner's Guide where I hope to help you better understand how outpost building works. It's, it's complicated and the game does not do a great job of explaining things. So let's go over a few things real quick. Uh, I'm going to explain how to build a basic mining outpost with extractors, power containers, and a transfer container, which is really cool. More on that later. Also, I'm going to show you how to build a supply line. Supply lines are really, really cool and useful. You can transfer materials from one base to another. So if you have a home base and you're transferring all these things to it and you have one stop shop to grab all your stuff, it's pretty awesome. Also, uh, I created a shopping list. That way you have all the things you need before you follow this guide. So I threw a bunch of stuff together. Hopefully that will help you out. And if you have problems finding these supplies, I'll show you where you can go buy those. Also, I picked a pretty great planet. It's not too far away and has iron and aluminum. I'll show you where that is. And also, I hope to have fun with this. And I want to show you um, this game. It is complicated, but it, it could also be really fun when it comes to building this stuff. So let's go ahead and start with the shopping list. Um, so for the basic mining outpost, you're going to need tungsten, iron, aluminum, beryllium, copper, adaptive frames, and lubricant. But if you don't want to build the supply line, you don't have to get the other stuff. But if you do, and I really do hope you build the supply line, because um, I think they're really useful, go ahead and double everything up top. And also, we're going to get some beryllium, iron, zero wire, and aluminum. So if you just want to go in and out real quick and learn how to create an outpost, then just the stuff above. But supply lines, I encourage it. Grab all this stuff and double the stuff up top. Now, this is where you can buy supplies if you don't have them. So not the trade authority kiosk. That is for only selling things. Don't do what I do and run up to it every time to see if you can buy stuff, because you can't. No, we're going to go to the Jameson Mercantile. And it's over by the coffee shop. And if you head over there, this is where you're going to be able to buy items. So let's go ahead and head in there and go to the buy menu and go down to resources. Now, this is where you're going to be able to buy a bunch of stuff. So adaptive frames, they normally have like three to four adaptive frames. Buy them when you can. Um, and if you need more supplies, just run out, find a seat and rest for 48 hours. And that should refresh the supplies in the shop. I've done this a couple times um, and it's pretty useful. So once you get all your supplies, let's go head to the ship. The so pull up uh, easy. You could run there, but also pull up the map, hit right bumper um, for the local map and then press Y and you could fast travel. So let's get in the ship. Let's travel to Narion and then we're going to land on a moon called Androphon and it's a moon of Sumanti. So um, let's it's northeast of Alpha Centauri. And if you head down here to the right, Sumanti is just sitting there with Androphon. So there's the moon and you can see we can't scan it because we actually haven't traveled there yet. But um, if you hit the A button to set course and then hit A again, we will jump over there. So when we arrive, go ahead and bring up the map and we're gonna scan the planet. So hold the left bumper and it will scan the planet. And then once you scan the planet, this is really cool. It's gonna show you all the resources that are available. And this planet right here has helium, aluminum, and iron. And aluminum and iron are really, you need that stuff for base building. So, but also beryllium and europium. Europium has three stars, meaning it's really rare. So this is a really cool moon to try and mine. So you can see we have all the resources here. We gotta pick where we're gonna land. Try to, it's really hard to get three of the resources together. So just pick something like that where you can get half and half. And you know, you may need to land several times to get a spot that works. I know I had to, so be patient. But what we're gonna do is hit left bumper and then uh, we're gonna use our scanner and use the jetpack, and we're just gonna fly around and see if we could find some. So there's some aluminum. So look for color shading on the ground. That is how we are gonna spot some of the resources. So there's some gray for aluminum. And um, let's look around, see if we could find some more. So you're kind of sticking around your ship. 
And, oh, there's more aluminum. Wow, there's a lot, of, a lot of aluminum here. So don't forget to scan the minerals, too. If you think you've already scanned it, just do it again just to make sure. Um, I'm hoping there's two minerals that we can mine. Oh, here we go. Here's some beryllium. Perfect. Okay, this is what I want. So I could work with this. So we got beryllium over here and an aluminum, two really good resources. So... Here's what we're gonna do. I like to stick my beacon sort of in between the resources. Um, so let's go ahead and hit left bumper to make sure the scanner's up. We're gonna hit X to bring up our beacon. Now that number next to it just means that's how many beacons you could place. So in the beginning, you could build seven outposts. You can upgrade that later. But for now, let's focus on the beacon. So like I said, I like to put my beacon in the middle of the resources. I'm gonna hit A. So as soon as you slap it on the ground, it's gonna bring up the interface and it's probably gonna have something straight in your face like this. <laughs> so um, let's, uh, but let's take a look at the menu here first. So, uh, so extractors, it's only gonna show you the extractors that you have the, for the minerals you've detected. So aluminum and beryllium for me. So power, pretty self-explanatory storage. That's of course where you're gonna, you're gonna direct all your minerals and stuff to. Um, structures, that's basically like habitats, and you can create crafting benches, and you can lay down defense like turrets to protect your base, which is really useful. Robots to help out with chores. And there's furniture and decorations and displays, all this stuff you could put inside your habitats. And miscellaneous, um, cargo link, keep an eye on that. We're going to use that later. That's how we're going to create some of our supply lines. So anyway, let's go back. We're going to hit... Uh, the toggle view button that'll get us into a bird's eye view and you can see that the extractor turns red when you can't place it down so what's nice is it's only gonna display aluminum veins if I have the aluminum extractor and if I have the beryllium extractor it's only gonna show beryllium so that's a nice little touch let's go ahead and put the aluminum extractor over the aluminum vein and you look to the left you can see what it's gonna cost to build that stuff and um, if you have your shopping list done, you should have all the supplies you need. Now, let's go to Modify Mode, hit the B button. And um, so this shows us, if you highlight it, that it needs power, obviously. So, okay, so let's go back to Build Mode, and we're going to create a solar array. So let's right bumper over to Solar Array. And let's not put it on the vein. Let's kind of keep it a little bit away from it. And they can actually go really far away from the extractors. But we're going to set it down. And so the next thing we do is we need to power it, right? So we could, if you highlight it, you can see it's producing six power. Sometimes they produce five or four. It depends on um, how much solar power it's getting. So it does vary. But we're going to hold the A button on, th on the actual array. And then it's going to bring up this window. We're going to select wire. And then we're going to set the wire and attach it to the extractor by hitting the A button. Now that's gonna supply power to our extractor, which is super cool. So if you look, highlighting, you can see it's powered now, and you can see that our solar array is, has producing, is producing six power. Also awesome. So let me go into first person mode here. Let's take a look at what we built. There's our extractor, it's working away. And you can see it's already got some aluminum. So let's hit the X button to bring up the inventory menu. And look, it does not hold a lot of stuff. So we're gonna have to build another container. So let's go back into the outpost builder. So left bumper and then X. And then uh, let's hit the view button to get to the isometric bird's eye view. And let's go to storage and we're gonna uh, select storage, uh, the solid storage obviously because it's rock. So let's build it. And so now we have our storage container, but we need to get the extractor to, to output to it. So highlight it, squeeze right trigger, and now we can press A to tether the output to the storage container. So next, we're gonna build another extractor. So go into build mode, go to extractors, and we're gonna bring up the beryllium here. And I'm gonna place the extractor on the beryllium too. Now, we need to power the extractor. So let's go back to power. And I'm just gonna build three solar arrays. So go back to the first one that we just built, hold the A button on it, select wire, and we're gonna attach it to the extractor. Now that the beryllium extractor is working, let's go check on it. Let's go make sure that it's actually 
doing its thing. Oh, pardon me, that's the aluminum extractor. So we want to make sure the aluminum extractor is in fact, and you can see it was empty because it's outputting all its resources to the storage container, which is what we want. So now we know the storage container is working. Let's go back to the beryllium um, extractor and we're going to right hit right trigger and we're going to create a tether and we're going to attach it and output to the other storage container. So if you go to first person mode while you're in um, modify mode, it's really cool because you can see the, where the power is going, the power lines and the output links. The output links look like they have dashes in them. So you could see there's an output heading from the extractors to the storage bin. So let's check, oh, wait a second, I gotta get out of, <laughs> get out of build mode. There we go. So you can see there's ber beryllium and aluminum. Both are going to, the storage container. That's great. So the next thing we're going to we're going to build a transfer container and transfer containers are so cool. This is a quality of life upgrade. So it's basically a storage bin that's lootable from your ship. You don't have to get out. So what we do is we channel everything to the transfer container. So let's build a transfer container. Then we're going to go back to the the um, storage container, the original one, and we're going to right trigger on it and we're gonna create an output link to the transfer container. So what that means is if we go in here, it should be at, whoop, um, there's beryllium in there. Maybe it just landed. Okay, now it's empty. So now everything should be in here. Good, it is, excellent. So if you take a look, now everything is heading over to the transfer container. So let's go in our ship. I wanna show you something that's really, really cool. So, um, by the way, the overflow from the transfer container will go to the container before it. But if we go into our cargo hold, and then if you go to, if you look at left bumper and you hit left bumper, we're gonna cycle to the outpost. And so now you could just land at the outpost and you can come into your cargo hold and you can just grab the supplies. You don't have to lump them back to your ship. Now let's talk about supply lines. Okay, so to save time, I built another mining base on Podius. Podius is a moon on Dandra. I highly recommend it. It's in this solar system. And supply lines in the beginning of the game, they have to be in the same solar system. Um, so there's a perk you can get later that allows intergalactic supply lines, but we're not, we're not gonna talk about that right now. Um, let me show you quickly this mining base that I previously built. So you can see there's the extractor going to a storage bin, going to a transfer container, and I have another extractor that's going also, it's outputting to the transfer container. It's very much like the base that we just built or the outpost we just built. So everything is going to this storage bin, the transfer container. And now everything from this storage bin is transferring to that building. That building is a cargo link. It's the beginning of the supply line that we are about to build. So let me show you, this is it. This is. This is the beginning of the supply line, the one I just showed you. The red storage container, this is outgoing. This is what you wanna send all your supplies to so that it comes to the end. So now we're gonna build the other side of the supply line. This is the base we're currently building. So let's go into build mode and we're gonna build um, another cargo link. But So if you go to miscellaneous and select it, this is going to be what it looks like. So take a look around. It's really cool. You don't have to, it doesn't require any power. And so this is the incoming bin. So the outgoing bin will land in our incoming bin. This is the end of the supply line. If I want stuff to go back there, I would channel output resources to that red bin and it'll go in the green bin on the other side. Now, here's the control side. This is how we enable it. So. You can see there's Podius and there's the cargo link. So you press, flick the stick, go down to cargo link and it shows the outgoing resources that are gonna be coming into this, this outpost. So confirm it, hit A and that sets it. Now, the really cool thing, I, I, I just, I love this. You can actually see the cargo ship entering the atmosphere and coming down here to deliver supplies. Now, we didn't have this in Fallout 4. Fallout 4, we had supply lines, but I think you could see an NPC maybe carrying supplies. I'm not totally sure. I never saw 
it actually. I just heard about it. But I just think it's so cool that they actually created transport ships and you will actually see them coming and going. Now you have to wait for the transport ship to leave port before checking the storage container. Uh, don't be like me and run over there and it's empty and you can't figure out why. You've got to let it do its thing. It takes maybe 20 seconds, maybe less, and it'll actually leave and fly away. And so um, let's go check it. Let's go see if it's actually full. Um, if you come in here and it's not, there's nothing in it, go into your ship, sit down, wait 24 hours. That should resolve it. Um, that's what happened for me. So anyway, you can see the stuff is arriving. There's some iron in there. It's really great. But let's make it even easier. Let's output the supply route bin to our transport container so that everything is going to the, I'm sorry, the transfer container. So go to modify mode. We're going to highlight the green bin and we're going to hit RT, right trigger, to create an output link. And then we're going to hover over the transfer container, hit A, and tether it to it. There we go. Now let's go check and make sure that those supplies are actually showing up. Uh, again, if you have issues, go sit 24 hours in your ship and uh, they should fix it. What's going on? So there's nothing. Oh, OK. So if you look in the bottom left, it's full. It's not going to receive anything because there is no room. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a couple items out of here so that we can see if it actually fills up because um, the way we've set it up, there's stuff waiting to get in there. And yeah, you can see it. So let me hit X and go back into the inventory explorer. There it is. It's working. So the supply route is working. It's routing into our transfer container and um, all is good. Don't forget to like and subscribe, folks. It does help me out quite a bit. See you out in the star field. Do, 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 do,